Welcome, I'm Steve Plater, retired road racer, former British champion and Isle of Man TT winner. I'm here to meet Guy Willison, designer and bike builder with 5.4 motorcycles. We'll be chatting about the partnership between Honda UK and 5.4 to create a limited run of built to order CB1100 RS motorcycles. Guy, thanks for inviting us down, mate. Oh, it's, it's an honour. Into your, into your workshop. Now, I've been lucky enough to ride this machine. First of all, tell me what inspired you uh, to build this machine in the first place. The inspiration for this, I mean, I've always wanted to build a bike like this for 40 years. Um, but the reason this came about is because I saw the CB1100 when it first came out, and I could tell straight away that Honda had spent a lot of time and effort and detail making this sort of retro bike. And straight away I got what they were on about, but it was a kind of one-size-fits-all, two-seater, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, I can do a styling job on that and make it fantastic that harks back to when I was 18 and I was a hooligan and we built bikes like this out of the big inline fours that were around at the time. And that really is the inspiration for this from the second I saw that CB1100. You know, it's gorgeous. It's kind of, uh, every part seems to be quite different, but you know, it's taken away all the raw edges of the original RS machine yeah. and it's just quite different. Uh, yes, it is. I mean, I had to have a nose cone on it uh, just because, to me, there were various models, about three or four at the time, that had a nose cone. And for me, they're the kind of iconic bikes that I remember from that period. So it's there from a styling point of view, and it's also there from a function point of view that with these on a A and B road blasting along, you do need a, a bit of wind blast taken off your chest just to keep it comfortable for all day riding. So it has a style and a function, and also I just think they look cool. How long has it taken you, obviously in your workshop, to put all of this machine together? Um, probably not as long as most people think. Because I've wanted to do this bike for six years, I didn't have to waste any time thinking, what am I gonna do? Yes, you've gotta finalize it exactly how it'll fit to the frame rails and stuff, but I had the picture in my head, and I just set about getting it made or making it myself, and it took, from start to finish, about four and a half, five months. This is a limited run, yep. only 54 machines. Yep. Why 54? Uh, 54 is because, well, 54 is my old dispatch number, 5-4. Uh, they were forever nagging me on the radio, where are you, you're late, when are you picking this up? So I always wanted to have a company called 5-4, and that's where that stems from. I did a million miles in uh, sort of an eight year period, 120,000 miles a year around London, and I survived that, and I've always wanted to call my company that. Just run us through the modifications you've made to this CB. Uh, well, the modifications I've made, if you just do a list, it's not that long, because the basic bike is so good, I've not had to spec really beautiful wheels, and it was all kind of there, it had great brakes, it had great tires, so, you know, a short list is, it had to have the nose cone fairing, um, it had to have a single seat. Um, I love this kind of Alcantara and leather diamond stitching. I put that on a few bikes and it's kind of like a little bit of a trademark of mine. I, and I find it very comfy. These are like individual little pillows. Um, so it had to have that. Um, John at RaceFit is a mate of mine. He's made the cans, which have been made for the sound as well as the look and the power. Um, so it, it was a no brainer to go to John to make the cans for it. Um, and I messed around with various footrest setups and I decided to go for the originals because uh, I, I modified these, I cut the pillion pegs off because otherwise you know someone at the pub's going to put someone on the back. So to give them no option I chopped the pillion rests off uh, and then, then I thought oh if I mirror polish these these might be quite and they just remind me of the CB750 sort of Sealy replica. They're very very similar and I think that's where Honda in their research took their styling cue from for these so I thought they look fabulous, I'll go with those. So it was that, the cans, the tailpiece, the seat, and the nose cone, and that really is mostly it, but I wanted to make it comfortable and practical to go with it. Now the handlebar fairing, yeah. it's not actually fiberglass as most machines are. Yeah. First of all, what exactly is it, and why did you go with the handlebar fairing? It's made out of aluminium, only because I feel that's like superb quality. They don't crack and all the paint go funny, and, uh, and, and they're light and they're very strong. So for me, it had to be an aluminium and I, I like that hand beaten, you know, English wheel rolled and I just like all that. And everything I try to do, I try to make it real quality. That's why the tailpiece is also aluminium. Um, and I went with that and I've just changed 
like all the contact points of a bike are very important, where your footrests are, that the seat's comfy, but very importantly with the handlebars. So these aren't massively different from the standard bike, but they're an inch and a half wider each side, slightly lower. I've got rid of the handlebar weights because they're not in keeping with the period. You know, when I, when I was learning to ride big bruising bikes, they didn't have namby-pamby things like handlebar weights. It, uh, a pair of Tomaselli um, grips for grip with the ridge in, so it fits in your hand. They're old racing ones. Stubby racing levers. The originals were quite long. Uh, again, they look lovely, and to me, they just this bike, when you ride it, it all just fits. Um, and of course the satin black rentals rather than an unbranded chrome one and then everything on the handlebars is kind of that satin black and black and the mirrors are the same they're billet aluminium fantastic quality so all those contact points for you are kind of luxurious and the finished product where did the idea come from for the paint scheme for me it was only one paint job for this and um, Honda have been great and there's been no arguments about it they've let me do what I wanted to do um, but I've had to explain to them why, but I think everyone gets this. I used to go to Le Mans and the Boldor and I'd sit in the pits in the garage above the bikes when they came in at night or floodlit. And we used to sit above the Honda pit to watch these bikes with this paint job come in. So for me, doing a retro, big, bruising one of these, it was the only paint job I could put on it. That's why it's got the retro sort of badge that I think appeared in around 73. Um, there was a bit of discussion about, oh, should the badge be just white with no black border? And I just said, no, it's got a heart back to those endurance races. And that's what this paint job is. All of the works bikes were slightly different. This wasn't the same throughout all the history of them, but they were all very similar to this. So this is my take on that. And what was the relationship with Honda before this project? Before this project, I can say I've had no dealings with Honda or any other manufacturer. I've just been building mostly one-offs for mates of mine. I never made any money at it, I just did it out of passion and I've built lots of bikes like this for friends over the years when we were like 18, 19, 20 where we get a big inline four of the period, it had, an in, it had a single seat, they always had a black front mudguard, I did try this with a red mudguard and it looked very Honda but it didn't quite look rebellious enough to me because we were always breaking them and you'd put a cheap plastic or fiberglass black one, you didn't have the paint to paint it but for me and my group of friends back in the day, we always had a black front mudguard and then luckily Kenny Roberts did the same and he had a black and that was it, we just thought right we'll go with black. So uh, that's what it is, it's just my homage to those works races of the day. So 54 machines only, personalised yeah. with its own number on yeah. the rear tailpiece, these machines are built to order, Yeah. how do people go about buying one? Well, as I understand it, if they decide they want one of these and it'll be honour to build it for them, uh, they order it through a Honda dealer. Sounds like a busy time for you, Guy. Yeah, we'll better let you hopefully. Crack on.